We're going to wing it. All right, we're going to go with the small one first. Well, not anyone small, but less worry. Um, Faith needs prayers for a friend who left her daughter and boyfriend to go to a party. And she had good news this week. Good news. That's a prayer. Ian Spicer, who we've been praying about this week, he is having difficulties with his tonsil surgery. So we need prayers for him. Uh, this person has a second interview tomorrow. And my brother, his brother, his brother starts a new job this week. So that's good praises right there. Uh, prayers for Wendy, who is serving at... Epiphany? Yeah, yes. Yes. Epiphany tonight. Prayers for the young man in Epiphany that Satan would be crushed and that God's will would be accomplished in their lives. And then um, for those of you that haven't been on the prayer team this, this week, um, this is from Phil. Um, Sam Whitaker, a friend of his from way back then, way back a while ago, when? When? A long time ago. Um, he's gone missing. Um, he's 21 years old, son, uh, Triana and Jeff, the waiter of Columbus, who disappeared in Athens, Ohio on Thursday. There's been search party parties with dogs, police helicopters, and they found no trace yet. So we need to pray for him that he will be found for the family through this trial. And that's all I have tonight, so if you would join me in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we have these opportunities to lift these prayer requests up to you, Lord. A lot of praises and a lot of worries. And even the people that just wrote them down and put them in the baskets or even are holding them in their heart, Lord, I know that you know where everybody each and every person in this room is, I ask that you touch them, that you just know where they are, where they are, um, even as I stumble over my words, uh, that you just, you bless them, Lord, in the, in the ways that only you can, that you supply us with your Holy Spirit, that we can get through hard times and good times, and remember to praise you for the good and the bad. Lord, I ask that you just, Add your protection over us. I ask that you open our eyes and our hearts during this time of church, especially during the message here, Lord, that we learn something new, something that you want to teach us through Pastor Keith, Lord. Lord, may you bless this service and bless this church for this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. So it's good to be here tonight, eh? Yeah? yeah? So I mentioned earlier, I'm down in uh, North Carolina, and you know, they, uh, they're, they're hospitality, they're, they're known for in the South. Do you know what word they use a lot besides soda? I had soda this week, not pop. Soda. It tasted just like pop. Yeah? But, uh, the word they use a lot is y'all. Yeah. Right? How y'all know? Can I get y'all something? So if that slips out, just go with it, right? Maybe we can start a whole new trend up here, yawling people. Yeah. Not yet, yeah, y'all. <laughs> that will work in school. All right, so he, he, here's a picture of the, the lovely couple. Look at this. Aww. There they are. That was uh, right before the you may kiss the bride and in, uh, in the storm out there. So uh, right on the beach, beautiful weather. Um, a unique area. The area was is called Cure Beach. K U R E, <coughs> Cure Beach, and um, kind of out. It's so I just look for it on a map, right? It's down there. Um, uh, but it, there's a historic uh, army place there called Fort Fisher. Fort Fisher. So there used to be a, a fort there, and we saw the story. Um, it was a Union fort, and there's a big battle. Confederate. Right, right Confederate fort. You're, she's the history person here, so. <laughs> Confederate fort in there. 
there's a big, big battle, and so we learned all about that. And but part of uh, in the island was this. Uh, look at these trees here. This tree. All right. So uh, all the trees, uh, like of that type, were like that. What are they like? That they're leaning. Um, uh, can you guess which way the wind blows? <laughs> yeah. So uh, so over here was the ocean, and it was blowing all the time like that. Uh, the trees like that on that end of where we were were all like that. And, and I took that picture because I thought, you know, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about going against the flow. Um, you can see what the, the elements of this community did to that tree if you just stand in the same place and do nothing. Right? You, you end up uh, being bent and pushed in, in a direction. And going against the flow, that's exactly what we're talking about. Uh, you know, what, what can happen when you turn that tree around, help to get it straightened back up, or doing some things. But, but if you do nothing, you can see how your environment shapes you, right? So you can kind of think of that, well, how, how does your current environment actually shaping you, the person you are, maybe your kids, whoever. Uh, but I thought those trees, when I saw that, I thought that was very, very unique. So tonight, uh, we're talking about Against the Flow. This series is about what does Jesus teach us that is really different than uh, the rest of the world. Because right? the rest of the world is doing that. They're standing there getting shaped by its environment. But Jesus said, no, I have a different set of rules I want you to follow. I have some new ideas I want to share with you. All right. So tonight's idea is that real followers see the world through the eyes of Jesus. Real followers see the world through the eyes of Jesus. The little pencil there is just a little reminder to jot down that note in your notebook. So it's easy, uh, it's easy to see the world just like it is, uh, through, through the eyes of the world, I guess, you know, your worldview, that's what they call it. But to have a Christian worldview is when you're looking <coughs> at the world, at your community, at your relationships, your families, your friends, you're looking at them as if Jesus were looking at them. Jesus sees the hurt. Jesus sees what's going on. Jesus can understand the injustices. Uh, so we're real followers can see the world through the eyes of Jesus. When this happens, when you're looking at the world through the eyes of Jesus, it's going to stir something in you. It's going to upset you probably even at a point. You see, God will create a dissatisfaction or only discomfort in you. You'll probably feel, you might feel a lot like that. But, but look at the words here that we chose, a holy discomfort. That means something is upsetting you. But God has put that in you to upset you because something needs corrected. You're seeing the world through the eyes of Jesus. If Jesus were walking on this earth with us, he would go and do something about that. That's how God works in us. Saying, hey, I'm going to create a little, uh, you know, I'm going to upset you a little bit. And I want you to move on that. I want you to act on that. Because we're seeing the world the way Jesus would see it. And Jesus would go act on that. That's what we're looking at to, to do, to see the world. Here's some other ways that we see the world right now. Kind of what's getting in our way, right? What's hampering us. Um, and, and I like to call these feel-good gods. Uh, we get distracted by the feel-good gods. Even when we come here, uh, we get distracted with personal peace and personal and financial affluence. Right? So as long as I'm feeling good inside, things are, are working well. As long as I have money to pay my bills, I'm, I'm, I'm a, feeling like a pretty good Christian. Those, those distract us. Right? Jesus, uh, our peace comes through Jesus uh, all the time. It's not just a personal peace that we're trying to attain. And we're not just trying to attain enough money so that we don't have to worry about it. And those are feel-good gods. Uh, when we're following Jesus, when we're going against the grain, it's going to be a little difficult. A little difficult. There's going to be some discomfort there because we're working and seeing the world through Jesus. You see, life isn't always easy. And the Jesus walk isn't about getting what you want. Jesus was out there fixing the world. Jesus was talking to the people with troubles. Jesus was healing the sick. Jesus walked into a lot of areas where he wasn't welcome. All right? Jesus experienced this same difficult, this same difficult, Discomfort. Thank you. So when we say life, it's not fair. Yeah, that's true. It probably isn't. But thank goodness we've got Jesus with us. 
to help us through this time. Life can really be not fair and be very difficult. And we can let the negativity, we can let people bring us down, and we can let the devil win, right? Life's not fair. But if we look at Jesus, the one that we are, are modeling our life after, let's take a look at his life. Was his life fair at all? No. From the beginning to the end, Jesus' life wasn't fair. Let's think about this for a minute. Pretty much everywhere he went, people harassed him. The religious people, right? They questioned him. They doubted him. Uh, they, they ran him out of places. He was trying to fix and transform the world. Uh, he had friends that were very good friends, and, and he spent every day with them. But when the opportunity came to sell his friendship, they sold his friendship. He had people, um, he had another good friend to say, I don't know the guy. I have, I, I have no idea who this Jesus is. He betrayed him. And then on top of that, he gets arrested for, for a crime he never committed. And then when it came a chance to say, hey, who do you want? We'll, we'll release somebody. Jesus, who's done nothing, or this political murderer who, who has killed people and, and brought a big unrest. Well, so the world asked for this guy and say, no, let's kill Jesus. So when we talk about being fair, it got to the point that Jesus was even, uh, right before he was crucified, he was crying and crying out to God, saying, God, come on, isn't there another way? Come on, just, this is really difficult to bear. Would you remove this from me? That's how desperate Jesus got. But then he added at the end, but what is your will, God? Whatever it is, we'll do that. So you see, when we look at Jesus' life, it wasn't fair. So when we look at our, our difficulties, our hardships, we come by, you're in good company. You're in great company. Philippians 4, 7 says, Those who accept Jesus Christ experience the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. And maybe we understand that peace now. Maybe we don't. It's something, you can see, it surpasses everything. It might even be hard for us to grasp, but it's there. It's the peace of God that is with us each and every step of the way, each and every moment of your life, every second, down to the detail, God is with us. Now, I mentioned even when you're walking the life of Jesus, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You see, Jesus brings tension into your life. But he does this on purpose. He does this to, to help us act, to help us live out our faith. Heck, I can speak of tension. Uh, my beautiful, wonderful wife, Jennifer. See, you know what the story is based on how many beautiful, wonderful, awesome wife. You know, and this is the way God works. She said all the time, uh, growing up, right, Jennifer, what kind of person you did not want to marry? Oh, a preacher. A preacher. <laughs> <laughs> but technically, I wasn't a preacher when we got married, so we got that. But tension, yeah. You know, Jesus brings tension into her life. Matthew 10, 34 kind of helps us understand this a little bit says, do not think I have come to bring peace on earth. I have come to bring, I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. His sword is to take care of the injustices. His sword is the tools he's given each one of us to see the world through the eyes of Jesus so that we can help transform this world for the cause of Jesus. You see, he's about getting rid of these things. He's about taking care of the problems and the issues. Uh, if you look, he didn't spend time with all the good people. Jesus went and spent time with the people that was going to make life a little bit messy. And thank goodness that he spent time with me, right? When life gets messy, Jesus shows up. So he's here to take care of those messes. That's why he came. And because of that, he's transferred that over to us. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, God's way is not a matter of mere talk. It's an empowered life. Oh, I really like this one. We can't just sit around here and talk about it. We need to go do it, right? It's an empowered life. God has given us all the tools that we need to, to transform our families, our communities, our relationships, ourselves, right? God is all about empowering us. Because, you see, he wants us involved in those sticky, ugly, messy situations. That's how they get cleaned up, and then people understand and, and meet Jesus 
and it becomes a nice situation, right? So you see, our relationship with Jesus is not about escape. So when you get to know Jesus and you invite him into your heart, he's not going to say, okay, well done. Uh, let's pull you out of all the mess of everything in your life. And you can stand over here and enjoy. No, that's not what the Jesus life is about. It's about getting our hands messy. It's about helping others in situations maybe that other people would pass up because it would take too much time where there are people who don't want to get involved. Luke 9, verses 1 and 2 says, And Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He talked to all of them and said, You can do this. You can go out. Everything, all authority in heaven and earth has been now been given to you. Right? I, I've said this a couple of times, and I hope you believe this, but Jesus gave us tools to fight evil in this world, and I believe you are all superheroes. You can fight among which one gets the cape. I don't care. But Jesus is giving you the tools to fight evil in this world. It could be the, the tools of persuasion. It could be the tools of, of conflict of management. It could be the tools of finances that you can have an effect on people. But I do believe that you're all superheroes, and your tool has been given to you from Jesus. So when it comes to doing the, so how can we actually see the world through the eyes of Jesus? What is it we have to do to uh, be able to see this? Um, to t take a look uh, you know, at a different uh, way of the world around you. Micah 6, 8 gives us three simple things to do. Before we do this, Micah was a prophet. And he, he was a prophet, uh, so, so somebody who, who heard from God and went out and told people the very important message that he had. That's what Mike was doing. And the time he's doing this, uh, his community was just in shambles. It was. There's corruption in the government. Uh, people were uh, worshiping false gods. They were out of control. Out of control. And Mike comes and says, hey, if you want to get back on track, you need to do these three things. I like it. He kept it simple. He's told you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. There's the three things the Lord requires of you. Do these three things, and we can begin to see the world as Jesus would see the world. And then we can act on that, and then get our hands a little dirty and get involved in some messes. So the first one is to do justice. So justice means taking care of a situation where people maybe can't help themselves. Uh, being involved in the schools, I know that uh, it, it's a requirement for teachers and people in schools that if you know something happening to a child, you must report it. You must get involved. You have to help with that justice process. And, and, and it's funny to make it a law because that's kind of built into me. And if I see something, I gotta act on it. I need to help the helpless, right? That is what about doing justice is. A couple weeks ago, I came upon a, an accident here. Look at this picture, right at Navarre Road in Genoa. <coughs> I came around the corner. I headed to teacher conferences, and um, there's another uh, a lady, probably in her mid 50s, uh, out by the car too. I, I I just missed the actual accident, so I thought, well, I'll stop and get messy, right? Get involved. All people drove by it. Uh, so I stopped, and so I walked up and said, is everyone okay? And everybody's, yeah, we're fine, we're fine. And uh, the lady, she, she was shaking, you know, she was nervous. Uh, that just, you know, if you've been in an accident, kind of just jars your whole system. Uh, but she, so she's trying to call 911, and she couldn't quite call 911. So I said, here, let me, let me do that for you. So I called, and, um, they, and uh, you know, got a hold of them and stuff like that. Uh, meanwhile, I talked to, uh, no, actually, I didn't find this out until the next day. Uh, the lady who got hit was the aunt of one of Riley's friend's mom. You with me there? Yeah. Riley's my son. So. Right, so there's a, a little connection there. Well, the next day we found out, thank you so much for stopping and calling 911. The, uh, the young couple here did not want to call 911. They, they did not want anything reported. Uh, and, and you can see the back here of the car was just uh, really smashed, not to mention uh, she could be hurt. So it's funny how God puts you in these places, right? 
there you are. It's, it's time to get a little bit messy, get involved. Another instance, a couple of years ago, we had a soccer game, and uh, at the very end of the soccer game, the other team scores on us, but the ref would blew the whistle before they scored. Uh, one of the fans on the other side did not care for this. So when the, uh, the, the ref walked uh, through the crowd, she got all up in his face, and then he got back up in her face. Things started to get messy real quick. A lot of people sit around and watched, right? They wanted a good show. Well, they did. She hit him. Smacked him right across the face. I videotaped it. <laughs> I was involved, people. I was involved. Uh, we waited around. Well, we called the police. Well, I was videotaping it. Jennifer called the police. Called the police something. Uh, so that happened. But out of all those people there, uh, one other parent besides us stayed around. All these people saw it, but they didn't want to get involved, right? That's not what doing justice is. Uh, you know, we can't just let people walk up and smack people and uh, go on with life, right? We gotta be involved. And God says, it's gonna be a little bit messy, but I've given you all the tools you need, right? And, and getting involved might mean uh, an extra, you know, get called into court to tell your side of the story or, or to help somebody out. Or it might delay you from your dinner plans. It's gonna get a little messy. It's, now we're seeing the world like Jesus would want to see us. Mother Teresa says, do not wait for leaders. Do it alone, person to person, when it comes to justice. Second thing was to love kindness. Love kindness. I thought this was just a, this is a, a, a story that came across my Facebook feed of a friend. Uh, she said she was in line at uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, out, outside line of the drive-thru. The person that behind her was irate that she was taking too long. Irate. Understandably so, it's Dunkin' Donuts and coffee, right? I couldn't wait to get her coffee. And uh, so I don't know, I don't know what irate meant, but you know, you can see the body language and the, the fingers and the hands come up and down, right? So uh, I, and I thought her response showed love kindness. Her response was, I'm going to pay for the lady behind me. So she did. And she says, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I hope that, you know, showed a little kindness and, and, and sent the message of, of the love of Jesus to her. But, but loving kindness, to always taking that upper hand, always taking the walk that Jesus would when it comes to kindness and, and mercy and grace and showering people, showering people. We listened to, uh, I told Jennifer, we drove over 1,200 miles and we listened, uh, so that's like 20 hours in the car over the last 72 hours. And we listened to hundreds of, of music. And, and the one theme on most of the songs we listened to was, was that of grace, of God's grace. And how it just rains down, how it pours over us. So when we make stupid mistakes, you know, grace is that gift that we don't deserve, but God keeps giving it to us. And that's what we can extend to others to show up to show the world what Jesus is about. And the third thing is that walk humbly with the Lord. Walk humbly. In our uh, in our society, being humble is not lifted up. Making a name for ourselves is lifted up, but not to walk humbly. Uh, that's a sign of weakness to say, "Hey, you're letting God run your life." Yeah. To walk humbly with God means to, to let God lead the way, to, to let Him uh, help you live your life. All right. Uh, this video, I have a short video, about two minute video here. It's a little skit. I think it just really nails it on the head. When when we want to hold on to life too much, uh, so much that we can't see the world like Jesus would see it, because we see it based on how what we want to see it. But uh, what happens when we can let that go and walk humbly with God? So take a look at this video. Lord. So how did it go with Kat? Did you talk to her? Oh, well, Lord, not exactly. <laughs> did you forgive her? Well, Lord, I mean, I was just thinking, like, why should I forgive her? <laughs> because I asked you to. Well, yeah, I know you did, Lord, but why? We shouldn't have to know why, just that I asked you to do it. Well, that doesn't make any sense, Lord. I mean, you don't understand the situation. Kathleen has an attitude problem. Laura, you believe that I know what is best for you and for Kat? Well, yeah, Lord. Then you'll do this. But, Lord... This is no different than when I've asked you to do anything else. Yes, this is, Lord. This is way different. When I asked you to quit your job, you quit. 
well, of course, Lord, but I didn't like my job, so I was happy to leave, you know? I mean, this is way different. Okay, Lord, you know what? I've got an idea. How about we give it a week and I'll pray about it? Uh, I'll give you my answer now. Uh, but, Lord... Look, Kat's coming by here very soon. She's coming okay? by here? Yes. Well, let's go. Now's your chance to talk to no. her. I want you to forgive Lord, her. Lord, you don't understand. Hey! hey Lord, Lord, it's been like two Lord. weeks wow. since we've had coffee. Wow. Oh, it has. Well, we should totally get together this week. Oh, wow, I can't do that. I am so busy. Oh, yeah. Well, how about next week? Well, you know, actually, I don't think it's going to happen for a while. Oh, well, is everything okay? Oh, yeah, everything's great. Uh -huh. All right, um, I guess I'll just um, see you later then. Bye. <laughs> Lord, did you hear that attitude? I thought you were going to forgive her. I thought you said we could wait a week, Lord. No, you said that. Oh, okay, Lord, you're being unreasonable, okay? Why don't you just go talk to Kathleen and have her come to me and ask for my forgiveness? Laura, you need to obey. I want you to forgive Kat. But Lord... Why do you keep calling me Lord? You won't even do what I ask. Ooh. Why do you keep calling me Lord? You won't even do what I ask. To walk humbly with God. That's what he's asking. To say, hey, set your interests aside. I've got something I need you to do. I thought that was a great video. Great video, how, you know, how, how, how often we talk to God and, and we ask and we ask and we ask. And, and really, we need to stop asking, just listen, right? And let God direct our steps. You see, real followers see the world through the eyes of Jesus. So, so my, my uh, prayer, as we get into our prayer time here to wrap this up, is going to be for a messy week. To open our eyes so that we can see around us in our community, in our families, where there's hurting, where there's injustice. How can we show kindness? Right? How can we walk humbly with God and really allow God to take control of our life? To, to ask for one of those things so that uh, we come back next week, we're going to have these stories to share say, hey, here's how God was working in my life. And that, so, Messi, don't get scared about that, right? Jesus has given you everything you need to take care of the situation. Everything you need to fight the evil powers in this world. We call him the name of Jesus, and he can do that. Real followers see the world through Jesus Christ's eyes. That's what we're going to do this week. Let's have a word of prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just, we come to you tonight ready for a new set of eyes. A set of eyes where we can see what's going on around us and to see it the way that, that you would see it. And then help us to respond in the way that you would respond. We know there's hurt, there, there's forgiveness that needs to happen. We know there's, um, there's self-doubt and self-esteem and, and we can help with all of these things. With our words, with our actions, with our prayers. Lord, we, we, we say to open up our eyes so that we can see around us. To open up our hearts and our minds so that we can hear and see what's going on. Help us to walk right next to you, humbly. To not be the lead, to not take the lead, or, or even try. To help us let you lead the way for us. Lord, we're excited to go, go about this week to see what it is that you have planned. Help us to, to be ready. Keep our eyes open. Help us to, to take care of that holy discomfort that's working on us. Maybe it's just with a close friend that we're, we're, we're unsettled with. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a co-worker. And we just need to clear the air. Lord, whatever it is, we know you'll be working on us. And we pray that we can see the world as you would see it. Lord, we ask that you be with each and every person here tonight. And fill them and refresh them and renew them to do your word. Lord, we ask that you lead us, you teach us, and you would guide us in your will, not ours, but in your will, so that we can transform our community in your name. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, that brings us to our time of our of offering. We do our offering time here. So there's a round, round basket on your table. If you 
pass that around your table. And, uh, make sure you put in your checking card and then your offering. Also extend that out to the uh, chairs of the people not sitting at the table. Once that's all done, just go ahead and bring those baskets right up here anywhere and set that down. Uh, we're going to play a little bit of music and then we'll be done with uh, bringing up that offering and pray over it. And then we'll sing our last song tonight.